Hey guys, this is Magic Tuck Tuck, and these are tips that I wish I knew when I started playing ESO. I had originally, I was max CP on Xbox before I switched to computer, and it, when I first got on Xbox, it took forever to get max level, but back then it was VR levels. It took forever to get geared out, it for, took forever to get crafting all the way up. I made a whole bunch of rookie mistakes. And when I moved to PC, I got it all done within a month, just because I knew exactly what to do, what kind of gear I needed, everything. It was really fast. So here's some tips I wish I knew the first time. First is when you're leveling up and you get off the boat, the first thing you want to do is put one skill point into your first skill line, your second skill line and your third skill line. You have three skill points coming out of the tutorial or if you skip the tutorial and I use all three of them for one the first skill in each of my class skills. My next one I put into whatever weapon I'm working on. But you don't get experience for a skill line if you don't have a skill on your bar. Now there are few exceptions where you get experience other ways like Thieves Guild and stuff. Uh, but in general, uh, the skills you're going to be using in combat, besides Sigic maybe, uh, you, you get skills by having it on your bar. The more skills you have on your bar, the more experience you get with that skill line. Plus, if you have it equipped, that weapon equipped, you get more. That being said, you do not have to have that weapon equipped to put skills on your bar and get experience. You just can't use those skills. So usually once I hit level 15, I put, a, you know, various skills that I'm, of lines I'm trying to level on my back bar. And every time I turn a quest in, I switch to my back bar and accept the, you know, the quest reward. So then I get skill experience with everything I'm trying to get. Next is focus more on leveling your skill lines and specific skills rather than worrying about your morphs. Of course, an, another point later, magic and stamina, but at level 43, you get a free skill respect scroll and a free, free attribute respect scroll. So you can put whatever you want into your skill points and you can reset it at level 43 or you can pay gold and reset them whenever you want. Uh, so it's not a huge deal. Don't feel like you're stuck into certain things. I redid an entire character when I first started because I thought I had totally screwed up everything. Uh, but you just, you can't screw it up. Next is horse. So at level 10 in your quest rewards, you get a free Sorel horse. And before level 10, you can still spend 250 gold a day to raise your horse levels. There's speed, bag space, and there's stamina. Now, I suggest getting like 20 points into speed and then put 10 points into stamina and then finish off speed and then go for, uh, you know, maybe a few more in stamina and then get bag space because just having like 10 extra points in stamina feels a lot better, but until you're like halfway through speed, you feel like a slug. Also, eventually you're going to have enough skill points for like two builds on one character, plus all the passives you could ever need, plus more, and all the crafting skill lines. Assuming you do all the main quests, get all the sky shards, and get all the dungeon uh, bonus points and or skill points and everything you will have enough skill points for everything so you don't have to do just two crafting uh, trees on one character and two on another uh, which won't really help because like alchemy and food you want on every character uh, so just keep that in mind you can max everything out that you want now, you can't get every skill in the game, but, you know, you don't need every skill because a lot of skills are for completely different builds like tanks or healing or, uh, you know, stealing or something. You know, it's just there's a lot of stuff you don't need. Next is all delves have a sky shard. Every single delve has one sky shard. So every time you go into a delve, look for the sky shard. If you're on PC, you probably have sky shards add-on, so uh, you're in luck. 
Uh, otherwise, on console, if, uh, when I was on console, I'd pull up a map and just see exactly where it was and go get it. Um, and whenever I was questing in a zone, I'd have that zone map up too with the sky, uh, s the sky shard, so I knew exactly where to go. Uh, the next thing is every dungeon, a uh, group dungeon, doesn't have a sky shard, but it does have a quest, and at the end of the quest you get a skill point in every single dungeon for version 1 and 2 if there's two versions. Every public dungeon, here let me show you here, this is a delve. Every delve like this has one sky shard. A public dungeon looks like... right here every public dungeon has one sky shard and a group event a group event is just a mini boss that's a little bit harder uh, that you should be able to solo once you have a few champion points uh, otherwise if you can't just ask and zone in there if somebody can help and usually somebody else is trying to get the group event done as well but every uh, group dungeon has a group event and the group event rewards a skill points for every single one so you definitely want to get those. <clears throat> Experience scrolls, they're great. You get them in the leveling when you level the leveling rewards now, but they do not affect Fighters Guild or Mages Guild. They have a totally separate experience they get. So I've done that before too. Taking experience scrolls, thinking I could go farm Mages Guild books, it doesn't help. Picking a race. For whatever reason. Uh, ESO does not have the racial passives up when you're picking a class, so pull up magictuktuk.com and go to races and passives section under guides and you can see all the passives you want for all the classes before you pick a class. Now unless you're picking something for role playing purposes, you can kind of ignore this first passive. So for instance, I'm a dark elf. I get increased experience gain with dual wield. Well, that's all great, but eventually I am going to be maxed out, which is fairly quickly nowadays, and it means absolutely nothing. Now, my second bonus is kind of cool. It reduces damage from environmental lava by 50%. Well, that's cool, but, you know, when does it really matter? Other ones are like fall damage and stuff like that, so they're cool, you know, they give a little flavor, but nothing to base your race on unless role play the other ones see like here I have magicka max magic and max stamina flame resistance immunity to burning and weapon and spell damage so dark elves are a good uh, magicka or stamina race now you want to take into consideration kind of if you want to play magic or stamina because the classes are built around magic or stamina or a couple of them that can go both ways uh, <laughs> but anyways so just keep that in mind when you're picking a race you can race change it's three thousand crowns you don't want to do it a lot but you know it's not the end of the world if you pick the wrong race and you said hey i really hate magic or hey i really hate stamina Next is crafting. Even if you don't think you're going to get into crafting, it's such it's so easy to do when you're at max level and you have the right traits and all the materials that you should do this anyways, just in case. So your bags are so small, you can only carry 60 things in your bag when you first start, so it's going to happen a lot. Before you go sell all your vendor trash, go to a crafting station. This one's the blacksmithing station. Go to research right here. And it'll tell you right here, I have one available to research on mace, and it's powered. So I would click it down here. It tells you it might be different for a console, you know, X or A. But so I would press R and then pick the gear I want to research. Now, once you research it, that piece is gone. So don't pick something that you wanted to keep for any reason. And then once you do that and you research everything you can, originally it's just you could, I'm researching three but when you start you can only research one thing at a time for each uh, crafting line and there's a passive in the skill line that allows you to research more things faster so go research what you can go to deconstruct and deconstruct anything you don't want and then once you've deconstructed everything and researched what you can then go to the vendor and sell everything that you don't want and then 
the next one is for provisioning for the crafting skill line for cooking food and drinks no in every tavern there is a cook and there is a brewer they sell the recipes for the daily crafting writs for your skill level so if you have if you start doing your crafting writs but you don't have them for provisioning just go to the tavern talk to the cook talk to the um brewer and you can buy the recipe for the crafting writs it's great uh especially when that's they didn't used to do it that way but they have it that that way now and a lot of new people just don't know and uh the way you level so fast now you don't get a lot of recipes for your for certain levels to stay with your crafting level uh so just go to the brewer uh go to the chef get your crafting writs uh recipes be done with it Also along crafting lines, I'll show you because I've done it for this character. My skill lines aren't maxed out yet on my necromancer, so I haven't done it. Uh, but you can refine things. So see here, like 497 rubidite ore you can refine. When you're at lower levels and you refine, you get some materials back. It turns into, this is like the raw material. And... Uh, at low levels you don't get much back at high levels when there's a passive that increases your chances to get higher level items let's see crafting let's go to clothing uh, do, 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 do. maxes the chances of extracting clothing ingredients and allows the refining of the most powerful tannins from raw materials so until you've maxed that uh, passive out, you don't want to refine because you won't get gold tempers. Gold tempers are what you use to improve your gear to legendary status or gold. And uh, they sell for a lot of money and you're going to want gold gear. So don't refine, save everything until you've maxed that passive out for a specific tree and then refine stuff. So then you have the chance to get gold tempers. Otherwise, it's really just worthless unless you're trying to make some training gear or something but in that case just refine what you need make your gear and be on your way save the rest for when you have chance for gold tempers inventory management in ESO without ESO plus is a nightmare uh, in I don't want to push ESO plus but if you're playing daily and you're spending half your time managing your inventory I'll tell you it's worth it uh, the crafting bag and double bank space is great and then of course you get access to DLC and stuff but anyways when you first start you get 60 spots in your bag uh, the first thing I do is I go to a pack merchant right here and you talk to them when you talk to them you pay money and they increase your bag slots by 10 now it's really cheap at first but uh, it gets really expensive after just doing it a few times I think if you do it all the way to the max it costs something like 750,000 gold or something like that. Uh, so, you know, I recommend just doing it a few times. Uh, once you have like 50,000 gold, you know, go spend it all on bag upgrades and bank space upgrades. If you have a lot of characters, bank space is better because you can put all your gear or whatever you want in your bank and you get double what, whatever you've paid for. ESO Plus gives you double if you have it. Uh, there's also a, a bank space upgrade person by the bank, so I always go do that. Uh, it's great, it just gets expensive after a little while, and there is a cap. The next, this kind of goes along with your skills. The uh, Anytime you want, you can come to the shrine to Alkosh and you pay 3,200 gold and I think it changes depending on how many uh, I have maxed out attributes if you didn't have maxed out attributes it would be less uh, but you pay 3,200 gold and you get all your attributes back so I could take all these out of magicka I could put them in health or stamina or whatever I wanted to anytime I want the shrine to stendar you can do just your morphs 
Or you can do all skills, so morphs and skills. They just do the morph one to give you a cheaper option. If you're just switching like one morph around, you do that one. But if you're doing an entire build, you know, or magic into stamina or vice versa, you would do skills and you just pay that much. It goes up the more skill points you have. So again, if you're not maxed out, that would be a lot cheaper. Outfit stations are in every major city. You can get one in your own house, just like all the other crafting things. Uh, but crafting, the outfit station, you can change every aspect of how you look. You can dye it whatever color you want. And just so you can see, see I can change my head, gloves, waist, feet, everything. Now, all these styles I have unlocked, and the ones I do not have unlocked, you can even look at the ones you don't have unlocked. But those are from motifs. You get motifs from different activities around Tamriel. Certain uh, like DLCs, you get them from uh, different bosses and delves or public dungeons or like PvP, you get some. And then you learn that motif style and then you can craft in that style if you have the style material. And you can also automatically use it in any of your outfits. I usually don't care what style I craft in anymore because I just always have an outfit on. You can, let's see, if you press C and go to your character screen with your stats, you can see your different outfits. Right now I have a costume on, but you can buy, the only way to get more than one, you start with one outfit slot, is you have to get them in the crown store, which is awful, mostly, because if you buy an outfit slot, it is character specific. It does not, it's not account specific. Another thing, you'll learn it pretty quick hopefully, but read every bookshelf you find at low levels, especially when your skill lines aren't leveled up. At low levels, skill lines uh, can increase when you read certain books. So just read all of them. Every, every time I pass a bookshelf, I just read it and randomly I get a skill. It can be crafting skill, it can be weapon skills. It won't be like DLC skill lines or anything like that or Sigic or, uh, but it will be uh, all weapon skill lines, all crafting skill lines besides jewelry crafting and uh, all your class skill lines. And when it's a class skill line, I believe it increases all three of your class skill lines by one if you get a class one. A couple other things just about builds and gear. When you get to level 50, you get champion points. Here's champion points. You get to unlock this screen up here. And you go in here and you, can, you get small points. So 23 points into Warlord is 10.22% block cost reduction. And with jump points, you really only get like 10%. Uh, but see, you get small bonuses to stats or like magic and stamina recovery on heavy attacks or magic recovery, uh, reduced cost of dodge roll. There's all sorts of stats. There's damage stats, everything. So you want CP. But CP, so that's what you get after level 50. And it, it goes like CP 10, 20, 30, all the way up to CP 160. And 160 is the max for gear. See, if you look at the gear I'm wearing, uh, Necropotence, it is uh, armor level 50, CP 160. There you is also armor level 50, CP 150, 140, and so on. Now, 160 is the gear cap, so that's like a new level, uh, is CP 160 versus CP 150. Until you're CP 160, gear does not matter. Now, of course, uh, you want to wear set gear under that if you have it, but you don't need to save it. You can deconstruct it. There's no reason to bank it or anything like that, even if it's a cool set or a monster helm. You're going to throw it away and never look at it again. Uh, once you get CP 160, especially because CPs are count wide. So once you're max CP and you level up a new character, as soon as he hits level 50, he's CP 160. 
That kind of rhymed. I liked it. <laughs> but anyway, so because of that, CP140 gear will no longer ever be available to you or your level again once you hit CP160 on one character. Uh, so for that reason, you just don't need to save gear. Uh, you don't need to craft anything or gold anything out until CP160. Uh, it would just be a waste of gold tempers. So just don't do it. Save all your stuff till CP160 and then craft gear all you want. Save it, bank it, do whatever you need to do. I have all my uh, set gear and storage and bank and stuff like that so I can just easily switch between characters. Uh, and everything but next is think about your build if you noticed when I pulled this up earlier all my points are in Magicka unless you're a tank which tanks usually lean one way or the other uh, anyways but that's besides the point um, you want to be Magicka or Stamina all or 90% of your skills damage is based off of your max magicka and your spell damage or your weapon damage and your max stamina so if you have mediocre of everything your damage is going to be blah so for that reason the really anything is viable for questing you can do whatever you want in questing but if you're going to pvp or you're going to uh, do any kind of end game pve uh, besides like normal dungeons, you're going to want to pick one. Magic or stamina, um, unless you're, like I said, tanking. Uh, but because they scale off uh, your max magic and or spell damage, uh, it's not viable to do a hybrid for anything super serious. You can get away with hybrids and specialized builds and vet dungeons and stuff like that, or even some DLC dungeons if you've got a good group with you of... Uh, friends, you probably don't want to go in there with a uh, randoms with some crazy build. They'll usually people just get salty over that kind of stuff. But you know, do what you want. For gear sets, it says right here: if I'm wearing five items, I get all of those bonuses. I get. The three max Magicka bonuses and while the pet is active, I increase my Magicka by 3,000 some. I get all of those combined. Uh, I can wear four pieces and not get that fifth piece. That's fine. You do get that, but usually you want your the five piece bonus. Um, if you wear more than five, let's say I wore six pieces of the Necropotence. I do not increase the stats. I do not get more bonuses. That's it. I do, however, get the maximum magic enchantment I have on there, and whatever trait, like divines, I would get that bonus, and the armor bonus, but you don't want to do that. You want to have it, usually people are wearing two five-piece sets and a monster helm set. A monster helm set, you get in group dungeons, you get the helmet from the final boss, uh, and then you get the shoulders from the undaunted vendors. But that's kind of how the gear sets work uh, when you're leveling you probably won't have full sets uh, you'll you'll probably get a bunch of pieces questing around in one area and you can wear them all but the next area they're going to switch don't really worry about it like i said before until cp160 it's not a big deal lock picking i did not understand ledgerman for way longer than i should have i didn't even know uh, what the Outlaw's Refuge was for a year. Uh, but so when you ever you un, like use a lock pick on a door or a treasure treasure chest, you get a little little bit of experience towards Ledgerman. And I thought, man, it is gonna take me years to level up Ledgerman. But that's not the only way. I didn't know because I had never been to an Outlaw's Refuge. But if you go to an Outlaw's Refuge, there is one in every major city, so right here, the Rimmon Outlaw Refuge. You go down there and there is a fence, and the fence you can sell stolen goods to that you, uh, you know, if you press control, you crouch and you go sneak, and you can steal stuff. You go to the fence and you sell the stolen goods, and every for every piece uh, that you sell, you get Ledgerman experience. You do not just get it from treasure chests or... Uh, lock picking doors 
I wouldn't even thought it was worth a mention, except I have a friend who thought the exact same thing, so there has got to be other people. One more thing to note about skill lines is that when you first start, <clears throat> you won't see all these weapon skill lines. What happens is when you equip that weapon, or uh, for weapons you don't actually have to equip it. If you get experience for a weapon, uh, say even from a bookshelf, you unlock it, that weapon skill, and then you can see it. Now, you still, you get, as you get experience, you unlock it, so you'll always get experience. You won't miss out on experience if you don't see it. Armor, though, you will get experience from it no matter what. Say you have one piece of light armor on, and you, but you can't see the skill line, you're still getting experience. But until you equip three or more pieces of a certain type of gear and get experience with it, you will not see it. Uh, so if you want to see them, uh, eventually you will for certain passives. Uh, just equip three pieces of light, medium, or heavy. Get some experience real fast and then you'll see it. Or take a weapon, equip that weapon and go kill like two mobs and then you'll see that weapon skill line. But same goes for uh, guilds, for all these Dark Brotherhood and stuff. Until you actually go to uh, the place or start the quest, you won't see those skill lines either. But they're there. Mage, oh, also uh, to note, Mage's Guild, I have not tested Fighter's Guild, but I imagine it's the same. Mage's Guild, even if you have not joined the Mage's Guild and you read Mage's Guild books, you are getting experience, even though it doesn't tell you. So if you get like 50 Mage's Guild books and you still haven't joined Mage's Guild, when you join the Mage's Guild, you will have gotten experience. Fighter's Guild, I imagine it's the same thing. I have not tested it myself. Regardless, as soon as you start the game, just go get both skill lines. You're going to want them. Thanks for watching my new player tips. I'm going to update my website, www.magictuktuk.com, under the guide section. Uh, with more new player tips, probably every new DLC or uh, chapter, just because I know every chapter there's tons of new people and it, it, there's a lot of information and it's really overwhelming. But thanks for watching, guys. Visit my website, subscribe if you'd like. I'll see you later.